G'day guys. Um, somebody left me a comment um, on one of Bart's videos and I sort of answered it. I'll actually show you shortly. And that that um, sort of gave me the reason to make this video because I looked at some of the files that I had, some old files. And I go, yeah, I can put I can put a video together in relation to that because a lot of people talk about collagen, about um, different types of injuries and issues and stuff like that. And in the early days when people start a carnival diet, they they have a certain level of expectations. They think it's going to miraculously um, sort out all their ailments. And over time, it will improve your health over time. But sometimes people expect like instant miracles. And it really, um, in real life, it doesn't really happen exactly like that. But you can improve certain things. Sometimes people will have certain uh, results, which may be a consequence of their past lifestyle and diet and sort of some pre-existing conditions that haven't been properly resolved. Sometimes these people should consult with people that are expert in the carnival community that understand a number of these things. Now, this person had the assumption that the carnival diet made things worse for, for himself, but didn't um, realise that there may be something else afoot um, uh, in that regard. Let me just share my screen and we'll get into it. Okay. Now, that was the um, keto is an epic fail. Say so Scott um, is not, um, Bart puts it in brackets. Um, and that's one of Bart's videos that he did two months ago. Yeah, we'll go down to, this is my comment, and I was just jokingly put in there that, you know, my key complaints is I'm warmer in winter and libido's gone up. So just a bit of tongue-in-cheek. Um, people just had a few, um, uh, Gary, um, uh, Carnival Hippie, and a few others had a few, you know, uh, jokes with me, which is fair enough. And then this guy here um, actually put a bill the fill the um thy fill um thirty three twenty four. He put up a comment. Carnival gave me growths. Um, th these now six hard lumps on my stomach, where it used to be one big soft lump. And as I said, and as I said to him, that sounds more like a hernia that is getting worse. Your past low protein diet is to blame for that, not the carnival diet. The abdominal muscle wall consists of collagen rich um, fibrous elements um, and eating shitloads of eggs can help with the healing. But I'd get it checked out to see how bad it is and avoid lifting uh, moderate to heavy items at this stage, basically, is what I'm saying. Um, if you go for the surgical option, uh, get them to stitch, a, stitch you up, uh, then avoid lifting anything other than light, little light stuff for a year and eat heaps of eggs to continue the healing. And I say never, ever, uh, go for the middle mesh option unless you have, unless you want to suffer the side effects. This isn't medical advice, and it isn't. I'll make that quite clear. But a friend of mine put that um, uh, stuff in and suffered it until he had it surgically removed. So, yes. So that's my view about that. Those sort of interventions. In the past, we never did them. And I think putting anything foreign inside, um, I have concerns because there can be reactions, interactions, um, which can be problematic with a lot of people uh, from just general uh, looking at some of the literature. So, but obviously, 
people may need to make their own choices. They're adults, and uh, I'll leave it at that. But so, what have we got? See, modern in modern times, we've got a whole lot of pharmaceutical interventions and stuff like that. So what did we do in the past before all these wonder drugs and whatever else emerged? 35 eggs a day in the pre-treatment of severe burns. Very, very good advice. Let me put it this way. Obviously, you know, they're having, they're going up from up to 7,000 kilocalories. Obviously, that is uh, a measurement of heat, not energy. Um, but it's sort of a, it gives you an idea about, we're talking about from somebody on the average um, weight, height type thing, you know, around about the 154 pounds, 70 kilos. Uh, these are the sort of three and a half times you want to go up in order to um, to provide the nutrients to heal. And we need to get them from, you know, proteins and, and animal fats, which is the key thing. Now, eggs are great for both. the uh, High in cholesterol, high in fats, and high um, in proteins as well, amino acids. So 35 eggs a day. Now, we know about that other guy, the, um, the older fellow that used to do um, uh, 25 eggs a day um, on average. So this isn't an, an, an issue whatsoever. And we're talking about people, they looked at a number of patients who had, you know, third degree burns, 30 to 60% of their body surface. So I'm not going to, you know, obviously they put meats in here, a hair, you know, 300 grams of meat, milk products, about one and a half litres of milk. Um, so obviously they've got some carbs in there as well, but, you know, the old times they used to do that. Uh, that's only 600, um, which, which we're talking about. So that's about 9%. is what we're talking about. So the the amount, of money. and it's just unnecessary. It's just back in those days, they still believe, oh, you probably need some and all that. And in terms of the grams as a, about five. Obviously, it's we're not going to do the kilocalorie stuff, and the and that's what they're talking over there. So uh, maybe I should. Hold on. Forty-five percent. So 36%. So about 19%, which I think, you know, isn't a, isn't a lot personally. I think we could do better. But, uh, you know, that was what they were doing back in that. Luckily, they were giving this person a lot of eggs. Now, eggs are going to have a lot of phospholipids, a lot of, uh, um, uh, you know, choline helps as well. Um, there's also a lot of uh, cholesterol in it, very important, for cell membrane integrity, you know, so, and, uh, and highly utilizable protein. Protein utilization is about 49% compared to meat and dairy that's about 32 percent and while the bio bioabsorption um levels are, are very are very similar it's the utilization 
um, for tissue, which also plays a, an important role. Anyway, so we'll get down to the nitty gritty. So we know people can read it as they're um, at, on their own time. So a certain degree uh, uh, further, su further support for this view was the rapid recovery, the rapid recovery manifested by, by good skin graft acceptance without much troublesome infection. And that's the key thing. Um, and it's well known in the literature that when you get an infection or a virus um, or any pathogen, the thing that actually goes down is LDL. It actually drops dramatically. Is because it's used by the immune system in its combat against these sort of things. So if you're consuming absolutely large amounts of cholesterol, which you'll get from eggs and things like squid, you know, then you will be able to have a trouble, trouble free um, uh, gr um, skin graft acceptance with very minimal, if any, infections. And that's important. In conclusion, the premise that a high air consumption is in burn patients is helpful and not detrimental has been confirmed by our observations. So this is an observ this is a clinical observational study. So it's not you can't experiment on people that are in clinic that are burns victims. You can't go, well, I'm gonna actually intervene on this person, but not on that person. They'll be in the placebo group. You know, but these doctors have got experience of burn patients and they know that um that people that are will have better results. The long-term effects of such a diet, however, are impossible to predict. Well, that's a, just the motherhood statement they always make. But we know that old that old geezer, 25 eggs a day, not an issue. I've covered that in previous videos. I'm not going to cover it here. That's for a later time. Anyway, pharmacological nutrients after burn injuries. What this study actually found is that glutamine and arginine are really, really important, including um, omega-3 fatty acids. But I, also, they should have looked at arachidonic acid because there's plenty of good research showing that arachidonic acid also helps with these sort of conditions. So I'm not going to go into, into this study at all. Um, people can actually read it. As, it's a Brazilian study um, at their own. It's a it's because it's a review of all the literature, what the, the literature um, shows. So, you know, if you really want to go through, there's heaps and heaps of studies here that they refer to, both old and more recent studies. So going back to the 70s, 90s, you know, in different periods. Um, so that's just so people have got a bit of a reference so they can look things up. Now let's look at some actual this research, um, which is trial data. The effects of hyd hydrolyzed collagen-based supplements on wound healing in patients with burns, a randomized double-blind pilot clinical trial. So this was done in Iran, and there was also some participation from the University of Adelaide in South Australia. Now they've been involved quite a bit, even you know, in the COVID stuff as well. Uh, remember they developed that new, um, one of the research labs that has come out of Adelaide University, the University of Adelaide. And uh, so they've been involved in participating um, with, uh, you know, these, this Iranian University of Medical Science, the, which is part of the Tehran University, um, which is a well-known, even 
for many years, uh, even from back in the 60s and 80s and all that, well recognised for high quality research that this university has actually done um, in the past. And it's the reason why this Australian university uh, has been collaborating with them because they've got some very good scientists. Um, and so they're looking at, you know, how to improve um, beyond the sort of typical stuff. So what they did notice was that the findings showed that hydrolyzed collagen-based supplements could significantly improve wound healing and circulating prior albumin and clinically reduce hospital stays in patients with 20 to 30% burns. And that's good. That means they're in and out much faster and they recover much faster. So when we... So that's how it was all put together. People can read that. I'm trying to keep the 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 time frame of this to a minimal. You can actually see the control. Um, and the intervention group, also body weight improvements, which means healing as well. And people can read that on their own time. So they saw, and these are clinical trials, which is good because it's actually in hospitals. So they're actually testing, you know, we've got the standard of care. Let's add some uh, uh, additional supplementation of, you know, protein um, supplementation. What happens? Well, it improves. That's what I was saying to this person. You want to heal? You got to give it the nutrients. What is, what's your what's your um, uh, body made of? Your cells. They're basically cholesterol, fats, proteins. These are the stuff. I mean. Most of, you know, if you think of it, what's your bones? Mineralized collagen. What's your, you know, abdominal muscles? Very rich in collagen. What's your gut? It's pretty much one of the most dense collagen rich, um, uh, you know, tubes in your body. It has to be because it has this contractile sort of thing. It has to have these strong collagen fibers. So collagen is all throughout our whole body, all the connective tissue and all that. If you're not eating enough protein and you're deficient, some of these things are going to emerge. Why do we see more abdominal abdominal issues nowadays than in the past and hernias on the rise and all these? People not eating enough protein, simple as that. You know, protein is important. Now, this person's been very recent on the carnival diet, but he doesn't realize that, you know, if, you know, initially you may have a, a weak area in the, in the abdominal area and you may have this soft protrusion. But then what happens is as the pressure increases, the, the, the bigger gaps open in the, in the actual, the stomach, you know, your, this frontal part of the, your, the abdominal area. And as those um, gaps open, what happens is parts of your intestine actually pop through that and actually create these hard lumps and actually can cause some digestive problems, but also can actually cause potentially some uh, very risky and dangerous problems as well. Um, because you can have um, damage to that tissue, to the, um, to the actual part of the gut that's actually protruding through those small, and it, and it can harden as well. And that's what this person is actually feeling. He's not feeling the overall pressure as before. Now he's actually feeling all these little things that have broken through those um, uh, the abdominal those that, that abdominal sort of um, protection and now is protruding and being pushed against the skin in the, you know in a, and because it's 
small cracks here and there where it's pushing through, it's actually creating these hardened type smaller lumps, you know, and that's what he's actually noticing. And that's why I realized when he said that, I said, he's got a hernia. It was quite obvious. Uh, and, he, and it's protruding in many places, which is a problem that could be a major health problem if he doesn't sort it out. That's why they, I encouraged him to go and get it checked out. Now, on that other previous study, where we the Brazilian review, what they did find is um, in relation to compounds that help with uh, burn victims, they did actually consider these two important amino acids, arginine and glutamine. That's very highly concentrated in collagen. And this one is also, but also has a nitric oxide effect as well. So, which seems to have also some benefits in that regard. So, looking at glutamate, the top ones, now 100 grams just for those people that may not be aware what, a, um, what we're talking about here. Obviously, 100 grams is 3.53 ounces. So, when we say 100 grams, 3.53 ounces. Just keep that in mind. So as you can see, egg white powder is very high, um, but also the cheeses like Parmesan, like grated Parmesan, Romano cheese, um, dried eggs. So you can get dry, 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 dry egg powder as well. Um, and a number of these other ones. Edam cheese as well, Gouda, you know, all the sort of the hard and semi-hard cheeses tend to be much higher. Swiss cheese, the you know, hard goat cheese, mozzarella. So all those sort of things tend to have much higher amounts compared to the soft cheeses. So keep that in mind. Eggs are a fantastic source for a carnivore. Now, with arginine, uh, meats and all that, you'll get about two plus grams in those off the meats. So all the meats are very similar. You're not going to find much difference. There are about two, two plus gram, you know, some a bit more, some a bit less. That's about it when it comes to arginine. When we're looking at dairy and eggs, again, as you can see, egg powders, dried eggs. Um, the cheese is a bit lower when it comes to arginine. The cheese is a bit lower. It's, again, the egg powders that are going to be much higher in concentration. And again, when we go to seafood, again, we're not going to bar this one here, Mullox. Um, the rest are going to be very similar to, to animals. So fish and a lot of crustaceans and all that are going to be at the same amount, quantity. They're going to be very similar to ruminant animals or to um, land-based. Um, so there's not going to be much difference. The, the only big difference when it comes to really both these you'll find is both glutamate and arginine. Pretty much you'll find it. it's primarily eggs. Eggs are the big one. That's why they were identified all the way back in the 70s and earlier as a real good um, uh, you know, food to heal. And it's understandable. It's got everything you need, you know, from this high utilization level, high amount of amino acids, high amount of phospholipids, um, high amount, and we're talking about, you know, really important phospholipids, phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylserine, you name it, um, a lot of different phospholipids. So it's like a powerhouse, creates an organism, you know, so I love eggs. Um, and so I do, promote that part. So 
on this one as well. We'll go to the glutamate. We'll go to the fish. As you can see, the fish are around the four grams. And the meats are slightly higher, around the five, five and a half sort of uh, grams. So when it comes to glutamate, you'll get more. Um, uh, the, bi the big one, again, is going to be dairy and eggs. Meats will come second and seafood third when it comes to those sort of things. Now, obviously, if you're, um, you know, we don't want people, unless they need it, we don't want people trying to get powders and consume shitloads of glutamate because glutamate also in excess, if it's not being utilised by the body, can turn into oxalate. So keep that in mind. Gelatin and stuff like that can in excessive amounts. So we're talking about here, in the matrix of food, it's less of a problem. But when you get into powders and stuff like that, it has the potential of being a problem because you're getting a single amino acid. You're not getting it in combination with other things. That's why I don't like powders. I prefer people use this information and maximize. If you're healing some tissue, maximize the type of um, foods that will give you a bigger pool of amino acids. My go-to for healing, when you're healing tissue in the body, is definitely eggs. Eggs is a big one for me. Um, if you can get more down, the better in that regard. And then make sure you're getting enough ruminant meat. And it may mean for a period of time, you consume much more. It's a bit like the priming that Bart did and a number of others. You know, we're talking about these sort of levels, three times a day, quite a bit of animal nutrition. Your body will love you for it eventually. I know it may be, you know, uh, you know, but if you really got, um, if you once your body starts utilizing it, you'll basically feel very different about it. You know, so if you're trying to hear a lot of things, you'll get improvements in that regard. So these sort of collagen-related issues that people may have, connective tissue issues, um, stuff like that, you do need to consume more protein. Now, obviously, unless you've got major ailments, like you know, burn, you're a burns victim or something like that, obviously then you would need these much larger amounts. But most people don't require that. All they need to do is just try and prioritize protein and animal fats in their diet. Try to avoid, you know, the indiscretions and other things. Minimize those to next to nothing, especially if you're trying to heal. If you're trying to heal, you need to keep it clean. And you need to increase the protein amount, you know, not being, you know, cut. When I usually say to people, if you're basically just doing a standard, you're healthy and all that, 1.76 um, grams per kilo body weight for women, 2.2 um, for, for men is especially if you're, if you want to build a bit of mus muscularity and, and maintain some tissue and all that. I don't, you know, I usually do about 2.2. I'm not, I do about once, once a week, I'll, I'll do a bit of uh, some weights, if that, primarily, you know, and you'll get good mus muscularity in that regard. But if you're trying to heal, I would push it all the way up to four grams when it comes to protein. And I'd increase my fat intake and my cholesterol intake at the same time. So I would double the amount of protein double the amount of uh, um, fats as well and cholesterol for the simple reason. And eggs are a really good way of doing that, you know, especially on the cholesterol side. So that's really what it is about how to heal your tissue and how protein is essential. I see many carnivals not consuming enough protein 
getting electrolyte issues like a salad boy did, getting other issues and, you know, or not healing sufficiently. Remember, those amino acids are not only going in for connective, for the, the structural material, you know, the, the general turnover of your cellular turnover. We replace our entire body every seven plus years. So we need a certain level of protein for turnover, but you still need plenty of additional protein if you're healing. And let's not forget, what about all those enzymes and all those other um, protein polypeptides in there that do a number of functions in the body? Well, they're important as well. You need those. And so you need sufficient protein to be able to transcript those as well. You know, not enough protein, your cells are not going to be able to produce enough enzymes to do the work. You got to have you got to have plenty of workers. You got to have good mitochondrial function. So we don't want that deuterium naughty deuterium food going in. We need healthy food, low deuterium food to basically fats, which are low deuterium animal fats, to basically support good respiration to be able to then provide sufficient energy to transcript those wonderful enzymes to do their work in the body. And for all that, you need to provide the food for the body to be able to do those functions. Simple as that. And this is what this sort of research is showing, that uh, you know, if you want to heal tissue that's damaged or has quite a lot of you know, damage to it, you got to get the protein in. You got to get the cholesterol in. You got to get the, um, uh, you know, the fats in the animal fats in. If you don't, you're going to have problems, you know. And that's the critical part. Those are important. And I think if they had actually put in more animal fats than what they had in the in one of those studies, they would have actually seen even better results. So. Uh, there was only 300 gram steak there. I mean, should have been a kilo of meat together with the eggs. It should have been much more. Um, and it would have made a, even a bigger difference. We know the same people of the Kalahari. I mean, uh, Cordain did some research on them. And, and actually in his book, he actually states yeah, that some of them do as high as four grams per kilo body weight. So that's not bad. And so those people are very robust out in very rugged environments into very old age. And if you don't have strong muscle skeletal structure in a very arid desert environment, you're not going to survive. So they're very hardy, obviously, because they're providing their body with enough nutrition to, to keep it going and being repaired and strong and vibrant and ma maintaining the muscle skeletal structure into old age. You can't do it any other way. If you don't feed the, um, the human body the nutrients that it needs, it will start, you know, triaging and saying, mm, what's important? Well, this guy sits around, he doesn't do a lot. Eh, you know, these muscles are not as important. These bones are not as important. These things are important. Certain things we need to, make sure you know the brain the heart these sort of things are uh, sort of prioritized and other things start atrophying and falling apart and then you've got aches and pains your, your knees are not working properly this isn't working you've got back problems and stuff like that you can still survive even if you've got those problems but if you provide the body with sufficient protein and fat from animal sources and cholesterol very critical we get enough, then the body will be able to function better, will be able to heal itself better and repair itself better. These things don't happen magically. You've got to provide the stuff. If you want to build a good body, you need to provide it with good materials. You know, it's not rocket science. Anyway, that's about it. Um, people can look at uh, you know the studies themselves and all that, but the take-home message is: you want to heal, heal tissue, you gotta eat sufficient stuff, animal foods, and you may have to eat more than baseline because you're healing. You're trying to fix t 
tissue. And many people sort of think, oh, I'll just do the standard thing. And they go, oh, it's sort of not working for me. Well, are you eating enough protein? Are you eating enough fat? You've got underlying unresolved issues. So people need to have a reality check and see where they're at in their, in their, on their journey. We're not at the same spot, none of us. You know, I may be here, you may be there, the other person may be further along or further back. Where each person is on their journey is going to be different. Their requirements may be slightly different as well as a consequence of that. One person may have more health problems to resolve than another person. So all these are going to make differences in terms of what we feed our body to heal it. Some people may have difficulty be having, because I've got too much mitochondrial damage, they may have to do some deuterium depletion, lower the threshold of, you know, of the actual deuterium levels and stop the damaging effects of deuterium, you know, high deuterium in their body. You still need some for collagen structures, but not to, you know, the 100 to 130 range. But on the other hand, by doing that and reducing the sort of deuterium levels, and then also putting in the taurine and the better sleep patterns and all that, blue blocking glasses and stuff like that, amplifying melatonin, they can heal slowly their mitochondria. And as they heal their mitochondria, they can improve respiration. By improving respiration, they can produce more energy. And as long as they can produce more energy, they can do more work. So they can take that extra material and fix more parts of our body. These all work together. The animal diet is low a low deuterium diet. It will work. But as I said, we can do some biohacking with some short-term usage over a year or six months or, or three months, depending on how bad we are, the ailments and all that, the deuterium depleted water in order to sort out some of this sort of stuff. Now, I have done video covering deuterium depletion and stuff like that and there is information in my playlist. People can go away and look at them and they can get some information there um, and also some information in terms of, of taurine and all that. There's videos available providing information. All you need to do is just Google my name and taurine um, and the video will come up and you can watch it and get the information. Anyway, the key, again, take-home message is that the level of animal nutrition you must consume will depend on the severity of your tissue damage and your needs, you know, the what your needs are. So I've always said the, fur, the more severe something is, increase it by double. The less severe it is, increase it by about 50-odd percent. So for men up to 300, three grams, you know, in that sense. And for women, um, being 1.76, it's about nearly two and a half, 2.6. Um, and three and a half at the top end. So those are the sort of numbers to consider um, at those sort of levels. So baseline, it's 1.6 to 2 odd uh, for men. Uh, then it's 50% higher if you've basically got, you know, some issues that you're, you're still dealing with. 100% increase, double, 4 grams, if you've got a lot of derangements and damage and muscle skeletal problems or whatever else. You need more protein. And you need more fats as well. So you have to up your fats as well. You need to provide the, the nutrients the body needs to heal. Just keep that in mind. Anyway, that's pretty much it. It's just a general, general information video than anything else.